We start out in a church with other survivors completely surrounded by infected, but the Left 4 Dead 2 characters aren't going to barricade their home or wait for official instructions. They're going to kill all sons of bitches. That's my official instructions. Alright, so we've got Dr. Breen, Father Grigori, Odessa Cubbage, and Judith Mossman. It's strange to even see NPCs at all in Left 4 Dead 2. I actually almost beat this chapter completely solo because Ellis just fell to his death shortly after this charger just single-handedly wiped the team! Okay, but seriously, the survivors leave the church to pursue the military that has been evacuating survivors in the area. You go through apartments, an indoor pool area, the streets, and a warehouse before you reach the safe room. This chapter does not have a single event. No panic event, no crescendo, no nothing. Is that a bad thing? Not really, especially if it's the first chapter, though I think I would have preferred if it had something. I suppose beggars can't be choosers. The first chapter is supposed to set the tone and story of a campaign. And this chapter does exactly that. It's about what you'd expect from an official campaign. It's a good starting map, it's fun, it's beautiful, and it's designed well. I don't really get to say that very often. There might be some minor quirks with bot pathing, but I only had one instance where the bots failed me. The bots fail me all the time, so this is nothing new. Okay, 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 oh god. This was a mistake. <laughs> Ah, dang, man. As weird as it looks, I really like the addition of the NPCs in the church, even if they barely move and don't react to being shot in the face. Still, it tells you that there are other people out there besides the four survivors. This guy is reading a book, and this guy is looking at cameras that don't even work. This girl is just sleeping. Nothing crazy, but I'm not expecting anything mind-blowing when I'm playing a decade-old custom map. I've honestly got nothing more to say about this level. We took all the medkits and weapons. You all. I find it funny how these guys literally died like five feet from the safe room. They were just that incompetent. I guess the zombies were just waiting outside the safe house to ambush them. Or maybe they were already infected and just did one last selfish action before they died. Kind of reminds me of this marine, he knew he was going to die, so he decided to pull out a grenade and take his fellow marines with him. Same thing with these survivors, they took everything even though they knew they were going to die anyway. They may not be medkits and weapons in the safe room, but you'll find everything you need as soon as you open the door. Now that the survivors are on street level, they look for any signs of the military to be rescued. I guess they are following any evidence of military presence, like the smoke in the sky. I know I mentioned this before, but my god, this map is beautiful. Maybe this is because of informal skyboxes. One of my all-time favorite mods of Left 4 Dead 2, I always have this thing enabled. But even without it, this map still looks great. But my praises are about to stop, because we are entering a subway. A subway I'll never forget. Watch the ceiling! This is one of the most unnecessary beginner traps I've seen in a while. If the map wanted to show us cars falling from the ceiling, it could have done it from a distance, not literally over our heads. And definitely not in front of a stockpile of ammunition and healing. It's literally a trap. The map pulled a joke! It could be funny if you're playing with friends and you see your friend get crushed by a falling ambulance, but this can wipe a whole team if you all fall for the trap! Now it's not so funny, is it? The map doesn't gain anything from this falling ambulance. It's there just to pull a joke that can sometimes be funny and most of the time be annoying. I know we're trying to establish that this place is very unstable for military and zombie interference, but the difference between this and the safe room supplies is that this directly compromises the gameplay in a bad way. 
The map does at least give you supplies during this. So if you do get hit from the car, you can probably heal back up. But when you think about it like that, it makes it sound even more unnecessary. You're going to down a survivor just for them to heal back up? What's the point? Let's move on. The survivors have to get through an alarm to make it past the subway. I don't have any problems with this crescendo event. I would even say that it's good. After you get through all of this, you land in a sewer, and then you are practically at the safe room. You already know what I liked and disliked about this chapter, so I'm not going to say any more. Now we've arrived at chapter 3, and shockingly, there are still no tier 2 weapons in sight. This is a 4 chapter campaign, and you only get tier 2 weapons in the middle of chapter 3. Like with chapter 2 and 1, this map does a very good job with storytelling. It follows what Left 4 Dead 2 already did with writings on the wall. Better safe than sorry, 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 better safe than sorry. <coughs> this is the last time I'll say it, but I've just got to give one last props to the map creator for how beautiful he made this map look. The orange sky, barricades, the tents, the blown out concrete, everything about this map looks fantastic. The survivors enter a flooded indoor parking lot. Here is where you find your first tier 2 weapon. It's about time. And before you go any further, if you're playing this map on expert realism, I would highly suggest you stock up on bottle jars because you're about to need them for the end of this chapter and the entire finale. After taking a lift to the surface, the survivors discover a crashed plane. The only way through is to force open the hatch. Doing this will summon an infinite horde with a lot of special infected. It can last a long time too since you need to run all the way up to this cannon and open another path to the safe room. Remember when I said stock up on bottle jars? This infinite horde is very, very hard without any grenades. And also, the special infected spawn rate is cranked up to 11. As soon as you kill one, another one spawns. You don't have any time to breathe during this infinite hood, so if you don't have bottle jars, you're gonna have a bad time. Once you blow up this wall, the safe room is down that path, but like I said about the special infected, they are going to be spawning a lot down here. Your best bet would be to just rush through as fast as possible to stop them from spawning down here. It's one of those infinite hordes that just spawn zombies like crazy. Kind of like the Cold Stream infinite horde. You know the one I'm talking about. After getting through all of these zombies, the survivors reach the safe room, ending chapter 3. This is a very hard chapter because of the infinite horde. It's not so bad if you're prepared for it though. And the map does prepare you for it with the amount of supplies it gives you. This chapter is good. It's a little short, but... With the very difficult infinite horde that you'll most likely die to in your first attempt, I don't mind this chapter being short. And finally, we've got the finale, chapter 4. I sure hope you stocked up on bottle jars. This finale is like the Parish and Cold Stream. Bomb rush to the escape vehicle during an infinite horde with special infected. Going up an elevator, a helicopter flies overhead and lands in the distance. After heading inside the building, the gate closes behind you, and now you've got to reach the top in order to be rescued from another helicopter. You can see soldiers up above trying to assist you as you make one final break for it. Doing all of this, you've got a crap load of infected trying to kill you. Like, my god, look at how many I killed. The specials are really what makes this finale hard, but they are only a problem because of the commons. Actually, maybe the common infected are the reason why this is so hard. Without bottle jars, you've got to really play well. In my playthrough, I only had one bottle jar for the finale, when I really should have had at least two. Once you make it to the helicopter, the campaign ends. I don't really like this finale. I'd even go as far as to say that it's bad. Here's why. It's very RNG based. If you don't know what RNG means, it basically stands for luck. There is a chance of a tank spawning as soon as you go up the elevator, which is not normal because there are already two tanks in this finale. If you get unlucky enough, this tank will probably end your run or at least damage you enough so that you're unable to finish this level. Another RNG thing about this are the weapons that you get as you run through the finale. The map does not give you any ammo for some reason until you reach that gate. And seeing as how there are a lot of zombies, you're going to run out of ammo. If you get unlucky and the map gives you... 
if you get unlucky and the map gives you two sniper rifles instead of a shotgun or assault rifle, you're kind of out of luck. I don't really understand why the map doesn't give you any ammo piles. I mean, it, it just gave you guaranteed laser sights before the finale, and you can't make use of it because you're gonna have to replace it. And finally, the last RNG thing about this are the pathways that might be blocked. So if you're going one way that you did before, it might be blocked off this time, which doesn't add replay value at all, seeing as how both pathways lead to the same place anyway. Here are more things I didn't like about this finale. There are a lot of white barrels that you can shoot, but they are more of a nuisance if anything. I forgot to mention that you need to hit this button in order for the gates to close, but only if all the survivors are inside. If they are not, you will have to wait until they die. What I don't understand is why you can't close the gate even if the remaining survivors are down. Now you have to wait until they bleed out, which can take a long time, especially if they are far away and no zombies are hitting them. The soldiers in this area shooting down at the zombies don't actually do any damage from what I'm seeing, which is very strange. Lastly, during the final run to the helicopter, there is a chance of a tank spawning in front of you which is really bad because this area is so enclosed, not to mention the fact that there are still common infected spawning in. It's just a mess. And not to mention the fact that if you kill this tank, another one spawns in front of you. Your best bet would be to somehow avoid this tank. Now, I don't want to just tear this map to shreds without actually giving my solutions to these problems. So here we go. First, try to remove that random tank spawn at the beginning of the map. I don't know why that happens, I don't think it's meant to be there, so if that can be removed, that'd be great. Also, add at least one ammo pile during the first run. Sure, there are already weapons and grenades you can pick up, but these are random and can sometimes be a weapon you don't want. Allow this gate to be closed even if survivors are downed outside of it. Remove the white barrels and replace them with gas cans. I complained about the random block pathways, but honestly, you can see if a pathway is blocked from far away, so this isn't really a problem. You can keep this. Finally, I think the tank that spawns in front of you during the final run to the helicopter should spawn behind you instead. All of these solutions boil down to me just asking the map creator to make the map easier, and I can understand how that might be frustrating, but it's all about the fun factor, right? I don't hate this finale, I just don't think it's very fun. Even on the lower difficulties, on easy, on advanced, on normal, all of these issues still persist. They are just easier to deal with. So I'm really asking for the map creator to make the finale more fun and also a bit more balanced for expert difficulty, please? No! There may have been a bad chapter, but overall, I don't think it's a bad campaign. I don't think it's a great campaign either. Chapter 1 and 3 aren't amazing masterpieces that can carry chapter 2 and 4. I think if that section with the falling vehicle wasn't there in chapter 2, I would have been able to say that this campaign is great. Instead, I have to say that this map is a 1! A 1 out of 10! 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. That means it's good. It's a good map that fills all the boxes that make a custom map good but it's held back by poor design choices and the entire finale. I was originally leaning more towards a 6 well, butter my biscuit. but after seeing the cool stuff surrounding this map, I bumped up that score to a 7. There is versus support and a very cool Minecraft easter egg that, if completed, shows you a password that you can enter into this website, which is still up to this day. Entering this password into the bonus material will reveal two add-ons. One is an earlier version of the map, and the other is a tank reskin. Very, very cool stuff indeed. I can see myself replaying this map from time to time. If I'm coming back to a map often, that means it's doing something right. And uh, that's about it, honestly. I don't have much else to say about Barcelona. All I can say is that this is a good map that should be remembered as a classic.